Hello and welcome back to Engineers Escape. My name's Jake and today we're starting a new series, How to Build a Camera Drone. Let's go. Hello, welcome to part one, the introduction and overview of the Build a Camera Drone, a series for beginners. A series for beginners, what this means for you. First thing is I'm assuming you know very little about this topic. Secondly, I'll try to teach in a manner that starts at a basic level and in basic terms. I will add some videos about background knowledge so that you understand the reasoning behind the things we're doing. And just so you know, this is my first drone build also, the second revision of it. So I will try to answer questions that I had when I first started. Please watch the series from the start to the end so you don't miss any important information. If you skip around, you might just end up more confused. My goal is for this series to keep things somewhat short and on topic. I will limit information to the components and systems we're using. Yes, you can build these things a million different ways, but sticking to one build is enough for the series. Please try to ask questions only about this build and these components. If you do have a question, please try to do a little research first to see if you can find an easy answer. If you still don't understand, please ask. I'll answer questions that I can. Please also help each other in the comments. Videos will be split according to topics. I will try to keep them as short and informative as possible. Safety considerations. I want to talk about safety so you can keep it in the front of your mind. When you think about the risks associated with something, you're less likely to suffer an injury. Electrical. We're primarily going to be working with low voltage direct current. Uh, there's always a risk of sparks, and we're also going to be using some alternating current to charge the batteries. Fast moving parts. Propellers can cut, fly into your face, someone else, and your hair could also get caught in the motors. Hot components. The motors and the video transmitter can get rather hot. Lead exposure. Um, don't lick or eat the solder, and the solder we're gonna be using is gonna be lead solder. It's a lot easier to work with. Hot soldering iron. There's always a burn risk and an eye risk if the solder pops. We're also gonna be working with sharp tools. Um, Lithium polymer batteries, that's the type we're using in our drone, have a risk of fire hazard and explosion hazard. So keep that in mind. Another thing is, if you're flying the drone at a very high height um, and it dies all of a sudden, that thing, the weight of that falling out of the sky can be enough to do some serious proper dam property damage or even kill someone if it lands on them. A little disclaimer, while I always strive to provide the most accurate information to you, you assume any and all risk for anything that you try. I will in no way be held responsible for anything that you do. So build and fly at your own risk. Why build it? I wanted to get a smooth footage similar to a DJI Phantom 3 or 4, and I didn't really want to pay that price for it, which at the time it was around anywhere between $1,000 to $2,500. I ended up paying around $500 for everything, uh, including drone, goggles, radio, charger, etc. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, I also wanted the technical challenge of building my first quadcopter, and I wanted to be able to customize the drone. I wanted to gain the knowledge from it. I wanted to be able to repair the drone after crashes and I wanted the satisfaction from completing the project. So what will you need? You'll need a lot of patience. Patience, patience, patience. You're going to need a willingness to learn. You're going to learn how to solder. You're gonna to have to use some hand tools and you're gonna need time, persistence, and more patience. My first expectation, oh, there's the battery. I don't know if you heard it ding. 
But my first expectation when I went into this, it's not just order the components, assemble the drone, and fly and get great footage. There's a lot more steps that are involved, but we'll go over them. It's actually more like this. So what should you actually expect? You're going to learn terminology and compatibility, learn some basics of electricity and electronics, learn some basics of quadcopter flight mechanics, assemble the drone components, set up the radio, set up the goggles, set up the charger, learn about different flight modes, learn to pilot a drone in acro mode, also known as rate mode, and expect many crashes. When you're first doing this, um, you're probably going to need at least like 10 hours or so to get a decent handle on flying acro mode. You're going to learn how to set up a computer to configure the drone. You're going to have hardware and software configuration, uh, adjust the gimbal software configuration, and there will be a lot of trial and error to tune the dampers for the vibration. There's going to be troubleshooting and more troubleshooting. You'll have to balance the motors, balance the propellers. There will be drone tuning. You're going to eventually bang your head against the wall because it's going to take so much time to get this right. There's going to be more tuning and there's going to be tweaking of the rates and the settings for good flight performance. Before we begin, I suggest you buy and fly a toy grade drone first, between $50 and $100 maybe. Do this and see if you like flying first, as building your own drone at times can be frustrating and tedious. You'll teach yourself how to fly, sort of anyway, and you'll get a lot of crashes out of the way. This one is a sharper image DX3. About the drone, the weight is about 3 pounds, propeller size is 10 inches, the frame is 450 millimeters, so from motor to motor diagonally, 450. Our battery life is 12 to 13 minutes, and they also charge in about 90 minutes. We have two different cameras. This little blue one down here is the real-time first-person view camera. We use this to fly and read the flight data in real time. And the yellow one is the high definition camera to record nice footage. For range, the radio controls can go upwards of 3,300 feet or about 1,000 meters. And the first person view video can go upwards of 1,650 feet or 500 meters. At least that's all the farther I wanted to go with mine and then I turned around. It has a bunch of different flight modes. It has GPS position hold, altitude hold, heading hold, GPS return to home, angle and acro flight modes, and even GPS waypoint missions. And we'll talk about those in a different video. We're equipped with a three axis gimbal. One, two, three. And that gives us nice smooth footage. We also have tall wide landing gear so that it's easier to land and also so that your camera doesn't snag in the grass. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of the Build a Drone series, the introduction and overview. In part two, we're going to be talking about the drone flight mechanics and flight modes and how the unmanned aerial system works. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.